How's it going guys? It's Avi from Weather Sponge Drop Thousand. Today is May 27th, 2020 and wow, Tropical Storm Bertha just formed out of nowhere. Last night when I went to bed, it only had a 30% chance of developing and then when I wake up, it made landfall as a tropical storm. So yeah, things change really quickly as today we'll obviously talk about Tropical Storm Bertha, which is now Tropical Depression Bertha, which made landfall in South Carolina. And we'll also talk about the Gulf, the potential low pressure system that could form into potentially tropical storm Andrea in the Pacific, and how that could, um, and how that low pressure, that same low pressure system could move onto the Gulf Coast, potentially developing into uh, an Atlantic tropical cyclone. But before I start, make sure to subscribe if you enjoy this content. And if you enjoy this weather content, make sure to like if you like this video and share with friends and family who are interested. But let's begin by looking at um, Tropical Depression Verta, which is currently a 30 mile per hour storm with its, minim with its central millibar pressure down to 1,008 millibars. So right, it's obviously very weak um, right now. It's over land, so it really doesn't have any, it doesn't really have much um, heat energy from the water to really develop any further. And though, and it's still, and it's over land, just dealing with a lot of friction from the ground. So the winds are, have definitely weakened since it made landfall in South Carolina as a 50 mile per hour storm, but it's still dumping a pretty decent amount of rain as we look um, at the um, previous track of where of where Bertha formed and where it made landfall, it it formed just off the coast of South Carolina and made landfall just north of Charleston at 50 miles per hour, and then it pretty much meandered all throughout South Carolina. And currently, it's moving at north northwest at 15 miles per hour, and it's at 30 miles per hour. As we look, it um, as we look at the future track of this. Obviously, it won't strengthen any further. It's over land. It's going to deal with a lot of friction from the ground that will weaken the winds. And it's going to um, pretty much be hindered by the lack of water that's surrounding it. So it won't be able to absorb much heat from the water surrounding it for this to really get any convection going within its center. And it's also going to deal with a lot of wind shear as well. So it obviously will not strengthen. It will remain a depression. However, there's still going to be the heavy rain threat just because it's a very weak storm does not mean you you will be out of the impacts when it comes um, even if this is a, trop a weak tropical depression as we're expecting a pretty hefty amount of rain throughout the western portions of North Carolina, Virginia and even West Virginia will deal with some rain from will deal with a decent amount of rain and potential flash flooding since a lot of that rain could be heavy at times um, surrounding the center of Bertha. But let's continue. And um, here's a current rainfall forecast. This extends from um, the early um, the early morning of Thursday, May 28, 2020, and goes till the end of Thursday. And you can see in the highest areas, um, potentially up to three inches of rain could be possible in localized areas towards the southwestern portion of Virginia and um, in the extreme southern portion of West Virginia. So, so keep an eye on that um, in those areas. And then it, the rain will even be, and the rain will even extend towards the eastern portions of North Carolina. And even Myrtle Beach will get into some of it as one or two inches um, additional an additional one two inches is expected on top of what you've already experienced in those regions so keep an eye on that just because the eye is well far north of uh, Myrtle Beach at this point you still will feel the rain from this even um, even as it moves on northward and if we move on um, to um, the satellite imagery you could see very well, dis very disorganized. You could see that there isn't really any circ um, convection that's circulating around the center of circulation, which is approximately right here. And the center of circulation at this point is um, is pretty much almost cloud-free. You could see that most of the moisture from this is towards north, drifting towards north. 
it's experiencing a lot of wind shear from this upper low that's just to the west of it and a ridge of high pressure that's further that's further strengthening that wind shear that's pretty much drifting a lot of these thunderstorms north of the center of circulation and since it's away from water and deep law free from land it's expected to continue to weaken so there's not much left in terms of um bertha really doing much of anything besides dumping a decent amount of rain now moving on outside of bertha we are also tracking another low pressure system that's has a high chance of developing into a tropical cyclone and has uh and is likely within the next five days to become tropical storm andrea as you can see in this region just south of mexico and guatemala we have an 80 percent chance of tropical cyclone development over the next five days as um this low pressure system is going to be under fairly favorable conditions as i'll show you the wind shear map and um the center of circulation or the low pressure that's expected to develop in the next couple of days you see that in while most of the atlantic and most of the caribbean is under fairly strong wind shear which makes the which makes tropical cyclone development highly unfavorable in this small patch right here just south of mexico and guatemala we see that the wind shear is very light in this region which won't which um which prompted the national hurricane center to give it a fairly likely chance for this to develop into tropical storm andrea in the future and as for the future um where this could go it's obviously gonna develop very close to land which is definitely worrying for those um in the southern coast of mexico where they could experience a hefty amount of rain or potentially even a stronger tropical storm however i don't expect this to strengthen that much in the pacific be most um because it won't really be in water for a very long time as the gfs model suggests so if we take a look at the gfs model this is as of right now if we move forward um you begin to see that low pressure system begins rapidly develop around three days out and it's just south of central america and it's definitely develop it's definitely developing um a, a pretty strong rotation which i which clearly identifies this storm and it's likely to develop into a tropical storm on jaya and you can see that it won't really have much time over water to really develop into anything huge or major like a hurricane as it makes landfall um right um in one of the central america countries and um and then it continues to move on land and what's uh and it's not only the, the Central America region that's at risk, we also need to identify what happens to tropical, cyclone, tropical storm Andrea as it makes landfall because once it makes landfall, it transfers, it gets some of its energy from the Gulf of Mexico and transfers some of its um, cyclonic vorticity to the Gulf of Mexico, which, which get, might give it a chance for this to develop a second time over the Gulf of Mexico. Um, in the past few runs, the GFS has really been emphasizing that this um, low pressure system will develop in the Gulf of Mexico. But the things to keep in mind is that those runs um, developed this um, this low pressure system very late into its um, into its forecast hour, which means that it's um, when it goes when the forecast hour goes well further well far out like let's say um further than five days out that's when it becomes like almost an educated guess like it becomes very very uncertain so it wasn't anything to take anything it wasn't anything to take seriously because it was because the gfs was taking it so um was developing it so far out into its forecast window so it wasn't anything to take seriously but now the gfs even if we go further is pretty much just um, making it linger over mexico and it's through this ridge of high pressure that's pretty much just blocking it from moving anywhere and then eventually it, it pushes that low pressure system more towards the west and more towards land which as a result won't strengthen because it's going to be over land and um, very far from water but you could see the gfs is really starting to struggle 
is really struggling to really develop it in the future and then same goes for european as they're both taking as they're both um agreeing that this will stay over land however i'm i'm really like forecasting this five six days out so this could easily change over the next several days um it's not until we get it's not until one to two days out where we really say with confidence what's um what area is going to be impacted but five days out it becomes very uncertain but um the thing but the point i want to come across um with this video is that at least something is going to develop we know it's likely that tropical storm on J is going to develop even if it doesn't develop um the forecast models are confident that some type of low pressure system will develop so that's definitely something to keep in mind over the next several days because if this low pressure system moves to the gulf of mexico there um that's definitely that definitely might be something to be concerned about because it's going to be over very warm waters and based off of what we can see currently there isn't going to be a lot of um low pressure systems or wind shear trying to disrupt it and it's gonna pretty much just um it's pretty much just gonna fall flow with this ridge that might strengthen it and give it an outflow channel for the for this tropical cyclone to let out a lot of um its air aloft to sink in an area so it's it would be worrying if this goes to the gulf of mexico however there's still a lot of uncertainty but but my point is that just definitely keep that in mind in the future um, just keep this low pressure in mind in the future because it could develop into something in the Gulf of Mexico. And I wish I could tell you that something that um, with confidence what will develop or not. But we're still pretty far out from really getting a good picture of what's of if this low pressure is go going to develop. But anyways, guys, I thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm, I'm gonna make another video that focuses on the weather throughout the United States entirely that's more general that's um, that's outside the that's um, that focuses outside the Atlantic hurricane season so keep so keep that in mind um, later during the um, later and I uh, hope you guys have a good day.